Okay, we had so much fun with the 1965 Arvin AM-FM set that I thought we would take a look at another Arvin built set, this time a 1949 Sears Silvertone AM-FM radio that I believe was built by Arvin Arvin for Sears. I picked this up at that big antique alley yard sale and right off the bat I noticed someone has replaced the power cord and I believe they replaced this potentiometer. This is actually the off on switch but this pot clicks on when you turn it on so when you turn it so obviously that's been replaced and that m makes me a little nervous knowing that someone else has been inside of this because so many times when someone else goes inside of something they do hack repair jobs and make problems worse than what they already were so let's turn this on and assess its current operating condition pause this while it warms up okay here we are warmed up volume all the way open we're on the FM band and FM appears to be totally and completely dead. Let's try AM. And it depends. Um, sometimes we'll have what they call truss lift. And, but you know, AM you know, works, but the truss is it's not as perky as it could be. Pulling the ceiling away from the walls. Okay. Um, Our tone that control can be works. With truss straps. In the Congress of the United States. So our volume is weak and a little distorted. Jesus says Lazarus is dead, and I'm. Now that's very distorted and weak. So. Are you happy where you work? Feel like you need to make a change? Let's pull the chassis out and see if we can get to the bottom of this problem. And here we are with the back cover cover removed, and I'm already finding reasons for me to be nervous. You see where they replaced the power cord, they just spliced a, another cord on with wire nuts to the existing old frayed brittle power cord coming off of the AC interlock. And there's this other wire that's obviously been replaced at some time coming out of the back of the chassis that that's, has a wire nut on the end of it. Not exactly sure what that's for unless it's an antenna. This chassis is a series string set with a selenium rectifier. Okay, so I guess now is as good a time as any to pull the chassis and see what it looks like underneath. I'm kind of scared at this moment. Okay, here's the underside of the chassis. It's obvious that someone's been in it, but it don't look too terribly bad. It could be a whole lot worse. This potentiometer, like I mentioned earlier, has definitely been replaced. And I want to replace this with a non-switch version if possible. I want to keep it as, as close to the original design as possible. And I see some electrical tape has been placed around this wire. And this lead coming out the back goes to the, was part of the uh, AC line FM antenna. It looks like this capacitor might possibly be a replacement. I don't know 100%. Yeah, I think it has been replaced. Okay, the first thing I want to do is check the power supply. Anytime you get a piece of, equi piece of equipment that's not operating properly, it's always best to check your power supply voltages because if the power supply voltages are low or are non-existent then obviously the equipment won't work properly and it's common for these old selenium rectifiers to uh, become weak and produce low output so let's check that first okay here we are con with the chassis powered up and before I go any further let me uh, issue a word of warning most of these type radios with no power transformer are a hot chassis design. That means they have one side of the AC line connected directly to the chassis here. What that means for you is if you, depending on the plug position and the wall outlet, you could have 120 volts on the, on the chassis. 
So if you touch the chassis with one hand while a part of your body is in contact with something that has a return path to ground, you could receive a nasty shock or worse, electrocute yourself. That's why it's important that you have the chassis plugged into an AC isolation transformer such as this. This isolates the chassis from earth ground or from the electrical ground. If you don't have an isolation transformer available, make sure your power plug polarity is positioned correctly. And the way you do that is plug the chassis in, turn it on, check your AC voltage between the chassis and a good known earth ground. If you get a reading, reverse the power plug in the outlet and recheck your voltage. You don't want a reading there. But the best rule of thumb is to use an isolation transformer and, and exercise extreme caution. Okay, with that said, let's check the uh, DC output voltage of this selenium rectifier. I'm looking for well over 100 volts here. More like about uh, 125, 130 or so. Let's see what we've got. Well... We have a whopping 63 volts, which is totally unacceptable and could explain why this radio is not working up to par. Say so the voltage is at least half of what it should be, which tells me that we most likely have a weak selenium rectifier. Now, they no longer make these types of rectifiers, but that's no big deal. We can replace it with a modern silicon diode. But here's the catch. These old selenium rectifiers have a greater voltage drop across them than, than does a modern rectifier diode. If we were to use a modern rectifier diode as is, our B plus voltage might be too high. So what we do, we put a, we'll put a resistor in series with the uh, rectifier diode to drop the voltage down. Usually the value of that resistor is anywhere between, say, 22 ohms and, and 80 to 100 ohms, usually in the 5 or 10 watt range. So with that said, we will now remove the old selenium rectifier and install a more modern silicon diode in its place and see if that helps the situation any. Okay, here's our original selenium rectifier is seen on the schematic. We have incoming AC coming in on the anode connection and then on the cathode connection the end with the line on it. That's our DC output voltage. Below the uh, schematic symbol is the 1N4007 silicon diode that we'll use to replace the original selenium rectifier. And this diode, the silver band, denotes the cathode connection. And I have it placed on the schematic, how it would hook up in the circuit. You want to make sure this diode's in correctly. If you reverse the polarity, the radio won't work and you'll probably blow up something. I'll also add another resistor here to compensate for the original voltage drop that was offered by the original selenium rectifier that's not present with this modern silicon diode. Okay, here we are with our new 1N4007 diode terminal strip and dropping resistor in place. Actually this resistor is only temporary. And got a 22 ohm resistor in here that's close to the right ballpark but I think I'm going to go a little higher. Unfortunately getting the power supply back up didn't really improve performance that much. It helped AM a little bit but FM still dead. Now we'll check the voltage, our DC output. Start out at 160 and as the set warms up it will drop down as the tubes start conducting and loading down the circuit.
left this on FM, but you know, we're down to 127 votes B plus, which that's that's about right. And here we are on AM. Like I said, the performance is a little better. It's now producing enough volume to cause this crappy speaker to rattle, which I will eventually either have to replace or retone. Why don't you get stuck? But yeah, FM is totally dead as a hammer, just like it was before. Okay, we'll conclude part one of this, and we'll troubleshoot some more in part two, but at least now you know how to replace a, a selenium rectifier with a modern 1N4007 or equivalent silicon diode. Okay, thanks for watching, and more to come later.